Well, welcome back to the channel. All right, everybody. So I kind of feel like it doesn't really matter who you are. You probably have a favorite train, whether it's real, steam engine, diesel, imaginary, you know, there's a lot of different options to choose from. Though on the chance you're a modeler or enthusiast like me, there's probably, you know, a good chance you have a favorite class or, a, you know, maybe just even type of locomotive. And for me, that's probably the Dean Goods. I mean, you can probably tell. I've used them plenty of times on this channel to not only make James, but just, uh, you know, for other models, I guess really to only make James. But altogether, it's an engine I really appreciate. It saw action in both world wars. Altogether is a solid model, or the one from Oxford is a solid model. And would you believe today, we've got a fresh one to talk about, all thanks to my uh, good friend, the Metallion. Now, everything you see in this video is uh, from the Metallion. He sent me a uh, Oxford, well, basically a care package, and I still believe he's selling some uh, other products. So if you're interested, be sure to check out his Twitter. But before anything, let's start with the classic, the engine. As the beginning of this video probably highlighted, I am a bit biased in saying this, but on the chance you're, you know, interested in getting into double O scale model railroading, this is an engine I often recommend because it's really, I mean, truth be told, it's inexpensive. It's uh, really not up there, I guess, in terms of price, but kind of is in terms of detail. And altogether, I mean, I've never had one that doesn't run well or just work amazingly. But let's not get too ahead of ourselves. This is the box. It's kind of boring. Yeah, I love Oxford Rail, but uh, their box game is a little bit weak. As you can see here, it's just this uh, yellow, red, and tan... Uh, sleeve here with a window to the locomotive it's the oxford rail logo here on the left the top is another oxford rail logo same on the bottom and the back is a bunch of boring uh you know hazards and stuff like that it doesn't come with any information on the actual dean goods or anything like that which is something i do appreciate but let's be honest doesn't happen on most it's not even on bachman thomas stuff at this point so who cares yeah and this sleeve just kind of pulls off like this and boom you're now to the locomotive or uh, the area that holds the locomotive, the uh, inner box. And this just slips right out of there. And we've also got, as you can see here, a little maintenance guide for the uh, Oxford Rail Dean Goods. A little picture there of the uh, engine. I think that's the, yeah, that's the older variant that has a, a lot of lining. As you can see, the uh, GWR version. And here is our little, yeah, some diagrams showing you how to lubricate and install the DCC decoder there on the right and the tender bar adjustment here on the bottom. So yeah, really nothing, I mean, too crazy in there. We'll just put that to the side. Again, here is the locomotive in its uh, little plastic prison that you take this other sleeve off like here. And boom, now you've got the, uh, well, not the locomotive yet, but you're almost there. You take this little area here or this tab, pull that up. And there we go, ladies and gentlemen, look at that, a fresh Oxford Rail Dean Goods in the black livery, or a Second World War livery, or if you want to be particular, War Department, it's, you know, whatever, whatever, that's, uh, it's here, that's what matters. Okay, so to talk about the uh, actual locomotive, we'll do a bit of a close-up, since I don't think the uh, last camera angle would have done me too well. So this, ladies and gentlemen, is the Oxford Rail Dean Goods, and... Again, just what a phenomenal model right off the bat. There's so much detail you can see, and this is probably their simplest livery, or uh, one of the simpler liveries you can get out there for the Dean Goods. Yeah, even if you're getting the uh, simpler ROD livery, it's a pretty good step up from this, just because, again, there's no lining, there's really nothing too complex. It's just a bunch of, I mean, really decal work. We do have painted buffer beams and stuff like that, but this is just a... Uh, all black livery with, uh, again, a lot of added numbers and stuff like that. But again, the engine wears it well, and there is a lot of detail here for us to go through. So not only are we looking at separately fitted handrails and stuff like that, but a solid buffer beam with a uh, brake system that actually connects to something and extends under the uh, buffer beam, as you can see here. In terms of metal or uh, die cast detail, there's really not a lot. That's mostly the chassis and uh, running board. But we do have a reverser, which is separately fitted and uh, also metal. And two whistles here on the top, which also are metal, but are painted so they're not very uh, reflective or anything like that. The numbering on this engine is 101, and we find that on the buffer beam here on the front, the side of the engine, and square here on the back of the tender. And on the sides of the tender, we have the uh, War Department or WD logos. Or not logo, lettering. It's early, I need my coffee, bear with me, these things happen. And looking past the tender into the uh, cab, just look at that detail. There's everything inside of there that could be painted, 
pretty much is. Like every dial, every uh, gauge. This looks phenomenal, and there's even a, a little bit of a wood floor there at the bottom. There's even a positionable cab skirt that leads to the uh, tinder itself. And jumping back to that, though the tinder has plenty of detail, as I'm sure you can tell, my largest gripe does kind of fall in that as well, and that's the coal load. I mean, let's be honest, look at this engine again, it's phenomenal. It even has sprung buffers, I think I forgot to say that, this thing has sprung buffers. Look at the cab, the overall build, this thing is done phenomenally, and you just kind of drop the ball with the coal load, seriously? Like, truth be told, it doesn't even look like coal, it just kind of looks like plastic, which that is what it is. That's a lot of what this engine is, and... Uh, Normally, you can get away with that. You should be allowed to get away with that with how much they have done aside from that. But it is something I do want to mention since it is something I do plan to fix and that you'll probably want to fix if this is something you really care about. Yet, you gotta remember how much you're paying for these things. These things are like right at 100 pounds, maybe 101. So in US dollars, roughly 120, 130, right? That's pretty much what you're paying for a Bachman Gordon, Bachman Henry, stuff like that, you know, and they don't have nearly the amount of detail this thing has. They definitely have it on size, if you're talking about those two specifically. Hell, think about American modeling. Some Walther's and Pogman engines go for that price and really aren't that detailed, at least in comparison to this, or if they were, they'd be 200 or 250 bucks. I have to say, for the last little bit, I very, very much appreciated Oxford, and all the work they put into these models and everything they do. Truth be told, if I had to give this or uh, any of their team goods a rating, it's an easy 8 or 9 out of 10. Sure, there are a couple things they could do better, but again, think about the price you're paying for one of these things. It could be a lot worse. And like I said earlier, I have yet to have one that doesn't run phenomenally, but we'll get into that here in a second. Now, you're probably wondering what exactly is the plan for this thing. Will it be uh, left like this, turned into James as well? Uh, no to both, though there are plans and just a, a little bit of lore built up around this thing, so expect to see a lot of it very soon. And if you want a hint as to what it'll be, that's it, that's all you get. If you're on my Patreon, you already know the plan and we'll be seeing a lot of this shortly, but uh, you know, just as a little thing for you guys. But we'll get into that here in a second. There's still some other things I think you guys uh, probably want to see. But like I was saying earlier, that's not all we have to talk about today. That's right. Ladies and gentlemen, I tried to tell you, we have a Oxford care package today. The homie sold me some gems, let me, let me just say. So to go along with that team goods, uh, we also have, as you can see here, some uh, Shermans on some little Warwell or uh, depressed flat wagons, also from Oxford Rail, or uh, sold to me from the Metallion. And these are some pieces I've, I've very very much been excited to get my hands on and now we not only have one but two to take a look at today now truth be told we're really only going to focus on one since they're uh, basically identical or uh well they really are identical but this is a closer look at that sherman that uh comes on the flatbed and truth be told for what it is this is pretty damn good you know i mean in terms of miniatures you can get a lot better detail out there i'm sure but this is die cast it's got some Pretty good, like look at that leather chest there on the back. That's pretty good detailing. It could use a wash or some weathering overall, but you know, maybe these are fresh tanks, you know, being sent out to the front lines or something like that. They do look pretty solid. Now, sadly, these turrets did come off in a pose, so I did have to glue those back. If those do look a little bit off, that's really not the fault of uh, Oxford. That's the fault of the United States Postal Service. But again, it is what it is. We've got this little piece here, which holds the turret in place if i can't even get it in there there we go so there's that it's altogether a pretty simple piece like these pieces here or the uh wheels do move and so does the uh you know overall track systems on either side uh do function but it's really not you know anything too great i wouldn't mess with it too much because this does like to uh come off the little grooves or you know a stable holding as i'm sure you can tell from that alone we already have to kind of realign it but again, they're pretty solid for what they are. They're more just flat wagon loads, and they look pretty damn good for being just that. Like, the, the amount of detail they did put on these things just did not have to be there. But keep in mind, Oxford does make miniatures, or they did make miniatures before they ever made model trains. So, this is kind of their thing, and truth be told, it's showing. This Sherman is fucking solid. Now, on the chance you're a war or a history buff, I'm sure there's plenty of things you're seeing here that really just uh, probably push your buttons and don't make a lot of sense. But again, just for being what they are, very simple little Shermans, 
they're pretty they're pretty solid i do love the finish they have on them as well like it's almost a bit speckled um it's again maybe not the most realistic for what these things would have actually looked like but again if you're working at this scale where people can't even have faces like look at this dude he doesn't even have a face i it is what it is it could be a lot worse i i do think there's a lot that they could have done to improve these things like some very basic weathering which i might come back and do later but again for all we know these are fresh tanks being sent out that haven't had the chance to get dirty yet so yeah pretty solid for what they are now sherman's aside we also have these flat wagons that they sit on and truth be told these are probably some of my favorite pieces just look at these they even have little chain details here on the top i just don't think i've ever had a wagon that's this detailed right off the bat like there's so much decal work here on the uh, side i'll get some better pictures and uh, throw those on screen a lot of separately fitted detail or uh, a good amount i should say like these little uh brakes here on the side and they are on both sides or these little uh white pieces here quite a bit of rigging here on the bottom which truth be told does look pretty damn good and we've also got nim couplings just like on the locomotives and quite a bit there on the buffer beams as i'm uh, sure you can see now unlike bachman and depole we do have a hook there so on the chance i ever want to run three links these things shouldn't be too rough to uh, set up or you know if i ever want to put three links on these boom there's an area to actually do that and again for being what they are these things are just solid solid little pieces or well they're not very little as i'm sure you can see but for again just solid little pieces of rolling stock and i mean truth be told what more can you really ask for these things roll phenomenally the only other flatbeds i've had are made by trying and i think bachman so this is definitely a step up it's just so much for what really isn't a crazy price i'm not 100 percent sure what these things go for now but i'll throw it up on screen for what you get i'd honestly say these things are just probably one of the better pieces of rolling stock or, you know, rolling stock sets, I guess, you could find out there on Hattons or probably eBay. Yeah, for sure these things come recommended. And altogether, I mean, if you're, it doesn't really matter what era you're modeling. I mean, it, if you're modeling World War II, perfect. Everything in this video should be fine. But that, who cares? You know, I'm not one of those people who tries to uh, regulate himself depending, oh, it has to be from this time era. Oh, it has to be from this line. No, no, we don't do that. It's... Whatever is fun, this is fun. It's beyond fun. It's pretty fucking awesome. Hopefully you enjoyed and also thought that same thing because this is this is pretty hype, at least for me. Yeah, not only two pieces of rolling stock I've been waiting for for a very long time, but again, a fresh Dean Goods that we do have plans for. I've probably already said that. If you're on my Patreon, you already know those plans too. But enough of that. That's for another video and uh, the future. Let's go ahead and see these things in operation.
Either, either, either subscribe, donate, or get the fuck out.